Hi everyone, I'm Shelly and you're watching There's No Place Like Home. I'm back with another homeschooling related video. Today's topic is veteran homeschool mom on Trump's $10,000 plan for homeschoolers. And yes, as you might have guessed, I am that veteran homeschooling mom. I am now in my 16th year of homeschooling my own children. I am homeschooling five of my 11 children yet. And so let's just say that I have some experience when it comes to this. Now, Trump's $10,000 tax write-off plan for homeschoolers is a huge talk in the homeschooling community right now. And places like Not The Bee have been making some sweeping generalizations on how they think homeschooling families are going to react to this. But I just wanted to share with you my own actual thoughts on this because it's something that a lot of newer homeschooling families don't think about when they hear that they are going to receive money or at least tax write-offs for, for their children's education. Because at first glance, it, it only seems fair, right? Because we are paying taxes. Those taxes are going to the public schools. Our children are not us utilizing the public school. So it would seem to be common sense that we should be able to use our tax money for our own children's education. But what I and many, many other veteran homeschool moms are saying is that that tax money that we are paying, as much as we would rather not pay it, it is a small price to pay to keep the government out of our homeschools as much as possible. I homeschool in Pennsylvania. It is one of the most highly regulated states in the country. So I already have more hoops to jump through than people in most other states. There are other states out there though with no homeschooling regulations or low homeschooling regulations. And I guarantee you that something like this is going to change that. So I just wanted to share two articles with you that will help me to express my thoughts on this. And one of them is just kind of a blurb from Not the Bee. And again, yeah, they, they made a pretty sweeping generalization about how they think homeschooling families will react. And I'm just going to spoil it for you right away. Spoiler alert, they're wrong. But anyway, let's read the title. Trump promises yearly $10,000 tax write-off for homeschooling families. That's $10,000 per child. Well, it looks like Donald Trump just won the homeschooling vote. Yeah, not so fast. In this message, the Don praises courageous parents who homeschool their children and says he will finally give them back the money they are taxed to pay for the education of other people's children with a $10,000 per child tax write-off for homeschoolers. And again, I did touch on that. That is something that a lot of homeschooling families, we, we gripe about it a bit, that we are paying taxes that go straight to the public schools. But again, small price to pay to keep the government out of our homeschool. Let's continue on. So here's a tweet and it says, Trump has pledged to parents who homeschool their kids that he will eliminate taxes on up to $10,000 a year per child on all costs associated with their children's education. So a lot of people are making this sound like it's an actual $10,000 per child that each family is going to get. That's not what it is. It is a $10,000 tax write-off or up to $10,000 tax write-off. But for example, if you have six children that you're homeschooling, I don't. his plan is not to just hand you $60,000, okay? But that, that doesn't mean that I agree with the plan still. And then it goes on to say, yes, that sound you just heard was every 15 passenger homeschool van in the country peeling out and heading to the polls. No, I will just say, no, that's, that's not the case because most uh, homeschooling families that I know do not agree with this plan. Uh, and then he says, I will immediately fight to allow homeschool parents the same incredible benefit, $10,000 a year per child, completely tax-free to spend on costs associated with homeschool education. Let me just say $10,000 a year. I, I mean, I don't know a lot of homeschooling families. I do know other homeschooling families. I don't even know any homeschooling families who spend $10,000 a year. That's a bit excessive, even in this economy. But anyway, um, it says it'll make it so much easier for families to have one parent stay home to educate their children. 
And then he goes on to say, I will also work to ensure that every homeschool family is entitled to full access to the benefits available to non-homeschool students, including participating in athletic programs, clubs, after-school activities, educational trips, and more. And the kids can participate in sports and other school activities. Well, let's just look at this more closely. Most states already allow homeschooling families to participate in the school's sports programs and after-school activities and other extracurriculars. So this really wouldn't be anything new. And what I also have to say, as a veteran homeschooling mom, I don't know of anyone, I'm not saying that no one does, but out of the homeschooling families that I know, I don't know anyone who even takes the school up on any of these offers because the whole idea of homeschooling is keeping our children away from that setting. So yeah, most states already allow this and most homeschooling families do not take them up on it because they're just not interested. So as I was browsing about all of this, I found this article that I'm going to share a little bit with you because it articulates very well how I feel about this. Uh, it's called The Problem with Trump's Agenda 47 for Homeschoolers. I'll leave a link in the description for this and for the other one, even though the other one, like I said, was just basically like a little blurb. But let me just read an excerpt of this. Though Trump's Agenda 47 makes him seem like a champion of homeschoolers, it's another bait and switch laying the groundwork for total government oversight and has potential for demanding arcane metrics from the same est establishment from which homeschoolers are escaping. I just want to interject here that me disagreeing with this is not an anti-Trump sort of thing. I would disagree with this no matter who was offering this. I don't care who would offer it. I would disagree every single time. So I think that I, I really need to make that very, very clear. One of the upsides to homeschooling among the many is that it allows parents to take charge of their children's education free from government intervention and bureaucratic red tape. This perspective is rooted in the principles of individual liberty and limited government. Trump pledged to allow homeschool parents to use 529 education savings accounts to contribute up to $10,000 a year per child completely tax-free in order to spend on costs associated with homeschool education. What are the stipulations behind taking this money from the government? So in this one, it makes it sound like it is indeed money that is going to be handed out. Either way, I don't want it, and I most of the homeschooling families that I know think this is a really bad idea. Anyway, well, of course, he doesn't say. So let's go back and see what that question was. What are the stipulations behind taking this money? Well, of course, he doesn't say. Am I wrong to be wary? Of course not. It wasn't long ago that a simple 15 days to slow the spread turned into the largest government overreach and set of tyrannical orders that the United States has ever seen. No matter how tasty the dangling carrot, it always comes at a price parents, not the state, have the primary responsibility for their children's education and upbringing. Homeschooling enables parents to make decisions about their children's education without interference from government agencies or public schools. As soon as the bait has been taken, the switch begins. What will that switch entail? That's anyone's guess, but the looming consideration that the requirements of standardized testing, curriculum mandates, and other forms of government oversight are around the corner isn't too far-fetched. I'm just going to add in here that what I know has happened in some other states that, that offer tax credits for homeschooling is they will start trying to restrict the, the homeschooling of even people who do not take these credits. Um, I also can foresee them, again, mandating curriculum, you know, requiring that certain curriculum is used in these homeschools. And like, like it says here, requiring standardized testing, which again, unfortunately, in my state, we still have to do it in third, fifth, and eighth grade, but standardized testing, other forms of bureaucratic red tape, all things that homeschooling families, most homeschooling families right now do not have to deal with. 
Trump also noted that he will work to ensure that every homeschool family is entitled to benefits available to non-homeschooled -home students, including participating in athletic programs, clubs, after-school activities, educational trips, and more. In most areas, these are already available to homeschoolers, which is exactly what I said, though many happily decline as the enrichment op opportunities for those who homeschool are incredibly varied and enriching as is. And that is true. There are so many homeschool co-ops out there. There are homeschool groups. They have these little pods. Do they call them homeschool pods? I'm not sure. Micro schools. There are so many other ways for children who are homeschooled to participate in these activities that, again, I don't know of anyone who actually uses the schools for these activities. Homeschooling offers self-reliance, allowing parents and children to tailor their education individually, rather than being limited to a one-size-fits-all public school system. When offered a one-size-fits-all incentive, one has to wonder if the scope of homeschooling will become narrower. So what worries me is that many people who are homeschooling now are new homeschoolers, and they have not looked into the repercussions of what would happen if something like this would become widespread. They also haven't really looked into the history of homeschooling and what the original parents, who, who the, the pioneers as we call them, the things they had to go through in order to get homeschooling legalized to begin with. They, they're not sure about this. Unfortunately, I think that in this economy, people see dollar signs and they, they see a way that they think is going to make it more financially viable for them to homeschool but they don't understand that it is going to take away the very freedom that makes homeschooling as appealing as it is if if most of the people or even if a very large number of people start accepting this money they will then inevitably accept whatever requirements come with it and once the government has has that grasp on those people on that large amount of people who are d jumping through the hoops that they want them to they're going to expect all homeschoolers to do it, whether they take this money or not. That's all that I have for you today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed and would like to hear more of what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave one down below. And if you like my work and would like to check out my YouTube channel membership, I will leave a link in the description for that, or you can just click on it right on my channel page. And I hope you have a great day.